Hello, here's a quick and easy guide on getting up and running with Clipper on the Big Tree Tech Pi V2.1. I know people like me to get straight on with it, so I'll talk about my subjective views on the Big Tree Tech Pi at the end of this video. First, we jump over to the GitHub and we can see the process is the same for the CB1 module. So we click on this link and head over to the releases. Have a look for the latest version. Here we can see a couple of versions, minimal, which is just Debian, and then Debian with Clipper. We want with Clipper. So we download and then extract the ISO. Next we need to flash the SD card. Here I'm using Pi Imager. Pick the ISO we just downloaded. And then the target SD card. Whatever you do, don't go into this menu to set your SSID and SSH options. As with the Arbion, we need to do that in a text file after flashing. Once the SD card is flashed, we are going to mount the boot partition so we can set up our Wi-Fi and our screen if we have one. Jump into the system config file. Here we can set the SSID. Here I'm going to keep the default BTT stroke C1. Then we have some screen rotations options depending on how your screen is mounted. Then we need to input the SSID and password to connect to our router. Save that file, and if you're using a screen, open up the board environment file. Here you can comment the screen type you have. For example, a I2C or SPI serial connection. I'm running headless, so I don't need to define a screen here. Once this is done, we can close this down, eject the SD card and insert it into the Big Tree Tech Pi. And connect to the Big Tree Tech Pi over our Wi-Fi using the address we set up. In my case, the default stock btt-cb1.local. This should now open up the main cell interface. We'll have an error message right away as we don't have a working printer.config file. So we click on the machine settings and find the placeholder printer config and delete it. Then we upload our actual printer config file. Hitting restart and that should clear the area and show now our MCU and host. If you have any invalid or unknown entries in your update manager, the easy fix is to just click on them and select soft recovery. This should fix the problem. And I'll just speed this up.
I believe that issue has actually been fixed now. And now we should be all set up, ready to start using the Big Tree Tech Pi. If you are coming into this without a printer configuration file, you'll need to make one. Example configurations can be found in the configs example folder. Here you'll find a bunch of default configurations for a whole bunch of printer types, main boards and brands of printer. As this is a basics video, I won't be going into setting up a printer config, but I will link to the documentation below in the comment section. If we SSH into the Bigtree Tech Pi using the username and password BQ, we can see it's running Debian Bullseye as the distro. But as the Big Tree Tech Pi is using an ARM Cortex CPU, the H616, that won't natively run Debian, they are utilizing a very exciting build framework called Armbian. Armbian is an open source framework for creating Linux kernels for ARM based computers and modules. And here we can see the CB1 has the highest platinum level of support. And if we take a look at the other boards supported, we'll see a lot of very affordable single board computers that would be ideal for running Clipper, like the Banana Pi, the Potato, Nano Pi, Orange Pi, and Rock single board computers. And for many of these boards, we have the choice of lightweight command line or minimal ISOs. This will be just command line or with a graphical user interface, depending on which one you pick. And even the choice of distros like Debian Bookworm or Ubuntu Jammy. To me, this is one of the best features of the Big Tree Tech Pi. As now thanks to Armbian, we have a whole new world of single board computers that we can put open source Linux onto. And as extension, Clipper and not to have to trust or rely on the vendor keeping their distributions up to date and clunky workarounds to run things like Clipper on ARM processors. I highly recommend looking into Arbion as they have excellent documentation and opens up a whole new world of possibilities for single board computers running Linux. Some of my final thoughts on the Big Tree Tech Pi V1.2. I like that it can be powered through terminal connectors directly to your power supply in your 3D printer, but I find it unusual that they use the word Pi to describe the product. Considering it doesn't have a Pi form factor, the I.O. pins are actually on the other side of the board. The drill patterns for mounting don't actually match up with the original Pi, so you may have to reprint a part if you have a bracket. I have seen some people refer to it as a drop-in replacement for a Raspberry Pi, but it isn't due to the fact that the pinouts for the I.O. are different and the drill patterns for mounting the board are actually different to the original Pi. But that said, I think it's a very good single board computer and definitely recommend it for running Clipper, as considering Clipper mainly uses Python libraries that are very lightweight and the graphical interfaces like Fluid and Mainzel are extremely lightweight as well. So the only challenge that you really ever have with Clipper is your webcam. And that depends solely on the make and model of the webcam, whether it does compression on the camera side or offloads that to a main board. As that's the only time you'll ever really be doing anything in Clipper that will actually use a substantial amount of compute power via rendering video files. Something that makes benchmarking in real terms any single board computers for Clipper very difficult because it really doesn't use that much resources. 
I hope this has been helpful and thank you for watching.